In this video, I show how to create a Hello World shell script as an Emacs org mode code block. Then I will start an Emacs shell inside Emacs and run the script there too. Now, this was a uh, assignment in the operating systems class. Uh, I slightly changed the description. And so I'm going to go and uh, put this away and focus on the um, uh, new script that I've created here. First of all, in order to do this, you have to have bash.exe installed on a Windows computer, or you have to have the bash um, executable somewhere if you're on Linux or Mac. And it has to also be in the path of your PC so that, then, that Emacs can find it. Secondly, you must have new Emacs installed, obviously, and you also must have my sample.emacs file loaded by Emacs. So uh, let's get to it. Um, actually, first of all, uh, how do we get hold of the bash.exe? Where well, one possibility is the simplest that I have found is to download the Sigwin uh, uh, suite. That's a suite of uh, Unix utility utilities. And um, you can simply find it by going to sigwin.com install.html. And here on that page, you find the file. Um, this file you can download and um, install. It's very simple. The installation is uh, really very, very simple. I'm just going to download this here and um, replace it. I already have it. You can see um, it's down here on my taskbar tool. So when it's installed, so once it's uh, downloaded, you click it. Um, you'll be asked, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? And you say yes. And then uh, you get the Sigwin net release setup program. And I've done this already. As I said, just accept all the standard um, settings. And at the end, you'll be, you have finished. I'm going to, uh, to cancel this setup. And uh, then you can put it on the taskbar and it will look like this. So Sigwin has its own um, uh, shell. This is the shell for Sigwin. And uh, it's a complete Unix shell. It looks just like the shell inside Emacs. And it's, it's just very, very nice to use. So for example, here you can type which bash and you get the answer slash user bin bash, which actually in this form doesn't exist on Windows. This is a Unix or Linux type um, path. So um, uh, for work in Emacs, this won't be useful, but the main point is that bash is now on your system. I'm going to shut this shell down again. I'm going to close this buffer because what we need um, is to... Uh, uh, install to open Emacs. So I'm going to click on the command the Windows search bar and type command, uh, open the command prompt. Uh, here it is. And now in the command prompt, I start Emacs. This will load my .emacs file. What will start here is the vanilla Emacs, um, which looks unlike the one you see here on the right hand side, but it's like the one that you are likely to have uh, on your um, desktop when you open it. So um, first of all, as I say here, you may have to make sure that you have the best shell. Uh, I already did this in Sigwin, but uh, you might already have it for some other reason, uh, which I don't know. So what we do here is we open a shell inside Emacs. As you can see, we are inside Emacs here. And if we type Alt X, uh, so meta X, Alt X E shell, which you see in the echo area down here, a shell opens. This is also, you recognize the similarity to the Sigwin shell that I just opened. Um, this is also a, a perfectly formed Unix shell. And um, same thing, this is the prompt, uh, actually the variable PS1. You can check that. I hope that works here too, but I have tried that. It's, it's not set on, on Windows. Uh, this variable that, that determines the prompt is called PS1. Um, so I'm going to clear the screen and um, uh, you see the directory we're in right now. This is the home directory. Yeah. So I can, uh, for example, uh, look at where I am, perf uh, present uh, working directory, C users Birkenkra, and that's the same thing as my home directory. So um, I want to check uh, if I have bash in this shell and I type, this is a Linux or Unix command, which bash and this is the path that I actually need if I want to write shell scripts um, in, um, uh, in, in, uh, on the Windows system. So we have it, and we're going to go and uh, over to our the, uh, uh, 
directory that I created earlier, org mode. In org mode, we have a bunch of files already, which I worked on in other videos. And we're going to use the first.org file because there's no reason not to. This file already contains um, some code, um, but we're not interested in that right now. We're interested in creating another uh, headline. Um, I'm going to move that to the bottom. And this headline is going to be um, a, a, my first um, Hello World shell program. A new headline. And we need a new um, uh, code block. We're going to show you something else here uh, in the uh, .emacs file, which I'm going to open here as well. It's also in my home directory, .emacs. And uh, in this file at the bottom, you find something called uh, org tempo. Now, org tempo is a very convenient way to abbreviate this um, uh, the meta characters that we need for code blocks. So, if you remember here in this code block, we need to, to create this begin src and src block. And that's a lot of typing. We still have to type in the header commands, but we can possibly make it a little easier for ourselves. And the way to do this is by expanding a skeleton code. Now, the code for that is uh, in, in your Emacs, if you have my.emacs file, is smaller, and then s for source. And if you type that, and then you just type enter, sorry, then you type, then you type tab, it will expand. Go do that again, control forward slash to remove it, you type smaller s and then tab and it will expand and that's just helpful now you can set this so i have, for example said i do a lot of r programming i've set this uh, the code smaller r to expand into a uh, complete r program already with some of the header variables set that i always use so if i click tab here um, actually that doesn't work for some reason it's probably not set on this emacs um, so I can't doc, I can show that it works on my other my other editor. If I go um, in this org file, as you can see, this is an org file too, and I type smaller r, uh, it expands like that. Yeah. So I'm going to go out again. Um, there are other other expansion modes. There's a particular variable. For example, you can expand and um, so expand an example. You can expand a quote which leads to a nice bar around the, uh, um, uh, the text and so on. And so this, I thought, was a nice opportunity to show you this little trick. And uh, now we are here, and uh, what we want to do is we want to write not a C program, not an R program, but a bash program. So bash is the shell. And let's maybe put this in the text in here because it's a, it's a relevant um, uh, relevant information. So um, the following code chunk, code block um, executes a hello world script using the bash um, shell. Okay. That's what we want. We don't need any more than that. Uh, the only code we need is echo hello world. And you can see the syntax highlighting is already understood here that I need this. Now, the only other thing I'm going to add here, and you remember this maybe from other videos, is I'm going to say exports both, which means that uh, both the code in here and the output will be exported if I render this as an HTML or PDF or anything like that. And I want the results to be raw, so I don't want the format in any old way. And um, now I'm going to type Control uh, Alt Q. So with Alt Q, I can get indent. I'm going to go back. You see, this is what I wrote. Alt Q will automatically indent it. I'm going to save the file, and now I execute the code block with with uh, Control C, Control C, and I get the result immediately in raw format. And that's really all there is to it here. Now, the next thing is uh, we're going to create a file called hello.csh, which is a shell file, and um, uh, which contains exactly the same code. Um, so I'm going to uh, split the buffer, Control x 2 go down in the other buffer, Control x 0 and then uh, open the shell here, 
actually, I'm not opening a new shell. All it does is it goes back to the uh, original shell buffer that I already opened. And I'm going to copy this path to the bash exe file. I need that for the shell file. I'm going to copy it with Control W and yank it back with Control Y. And I'm going to go up in the upper buffer and I'm going to create a new file in org mode, which is called hello.sh. And you can see that um, uh, Emacs already knows this is a shell script. So the major mode here is shell. The file is called, the buffer is called hello.sh. And now um, what I need to do, the first line in every shell script has to indicate where the shell program is that shall execute this file. And you need a particular code for that. There's control code, which is hash exclamation mark. And then followed by the path to the uh, program. So for example, on Unix, if you remember um, what we did earlier in Sigwin, you would write user bin bash because that would be the location. And you'd see that um, uh, Emacs recognizes that the first part is a path and then the last part is a program. But this will not be found on Windows. This will not work, I think. Uh, so what we need is this um, path that we have copied from down there. So this would work. And then the, the, um, let's go down and look at here. This is the, this is the statement that we need. We can, can copy that too if we're lazy. Put it up here, Control y to yank it back. This can be anywhere on, uh, on any column. Yeah. That's the file, that's all we need. We're going to go back down, Control x o to the shell and execute that file. First of all, let's check that it's actually there, ls minus la. Um, now that's a little big here. Um, we're in the wrong directory. As you can see from here, we, can, we are in the home directory, so we have to go to org mode. We can complete that, tab completes it. Um, and now in org mode, and now I'm going to repeat the file from before, control P to go through the history, go back all the way, control N to go forward. Um, I'm going to go back to this command, ls minus la, and this is the file we're in. Sorry, the directory we're in right now on the shell. And you can see there is the hello.sh file, and we're going to just execute it this way, hello.sh. I'm going to go back up and open the direct buffer, CXD, gives us exactly the same picture. We have to refresh this buffer and we see our result. And I think that's all I wanted to do.